Hello there. It's exciting to come your way, a continuation of our teaching series in our school of discipleship. What have you learned so far? I hope you are following through our teaching, making notes, and growing in them. We've dealt with what salvation is not, what is salvation. We've dealt with the need for salvation and benefits of salvation. The pathway to salvation has also been given to us. In this installment, episode number four, we want to look at repentance. What does it mean to repent? You know, in Romans chapter 10, we read this um, the, other way, the other day. We're going to go back and forth on these scriptures because that is a foundation. In Romans chapter 10 and the verse 9, the Bible says that if, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That foundation of scripture is what leads us into our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, and that is where repentance begins. But just like we did with the subject of salvation, I like to deal with what it is not, then we move into what exactly it is because that is where we have a lot of misconceptions and there are a lot of errors. So what repentance is not? Just some five things that I want to uh, um, um, speak on briefly. Number one, repentance is not simple conviction of sin. It is not the feeling of guilt and shame for sin because one has been found out or You have been arrested, all right? So when you feel convicted of sin, that is not repentance. That is not what repentance is. Number two, it is not being sorry for wrongdoing because you can be sorry for the sin and not be repented of the sin. So it is not being convicted or being found out. It is not feeling sorry about it. Because sorry about an issue or a situation doesn't change anything. It is not crying over it. Number three, it is not reforming your life or trying to turn over a new leaf or even make or making a fresh start. It is not just that. It is not reforming. It is not, you know, stuff like that. No, it's not feeling sorry. It is not trying to find a way of do, a new way of of doing things. Number four, it is not trying to be religious. It is not trying to, you know, stand in church and looking all righteous and looking all holy or being at church or reading the Bible. No, it is not. Repentance means more than that. And it is not head faith. It is not head faith. It is not, you know, just knowing it in your head with nothing happening in the outward. Okay, so let's now look at what true repentance is. What then is true repentance? The dictionary defines it this way. Defines uh, uh, um, repentance as the sorrow for a deed or regret. Or to feel regret for a dead, uh, for a deed or omission. To desire to change one's life as a result of sorrow of, of for one's sin. Now, true repentance is a godly grief for sin. It's a godly grief for sin. Having that godly, God-fearing grief for a sin. It is repentance that involves the total personality, your total person, your total being. You know, I'm sitting in this way, and true repentance means that I am turning an about turn. It's actually a military term. It means that I'm turning from this direction and I'm going to go into the opposite direction. That is what true repentance is. True repentance is complete change of heart and mind. Complete change of not not just being sorrowful, but you are completely, you know, you, you complete. The Bible says Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, Paul says that, and I beseech you, brethren, that you present your bodies to God 
a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. It says in verse 3, and it says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so the renewing of your heart and mind is the gateway to true repentance, and it involves the new way we feel, the new way, the, the way we, we think about sin. The way you feel about sin, the way you think about sin must change. And this makes us turn away from sin. That is how you can do an about turn to sin. And this change of mind involves your intellect. It involves your whole being. It involves a complete transformation of your mind. It all starts with the mindset on the fact that I am going to change and I'm changing my life. I'm changing my heart and so help me God. And the change of heart involves our emotions, your will. Your emotions, your will. You know, Judas changed his mind, but he did not change his will. After he had betrayed Jesus, he changed his mind. He went and said, take your money. I don't want to do this anymore. But his will was not changed. And so true repentance has to reflect in your emotions and in your will. And it is not having just head faith, but heart faith. Not just head faith, but heart faith. And so why is it so important to repent? Why is repentance so important? Number one, Jesus' first sermon was about repentance. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his first sermon. And that makes it very important. He came from heaven, born through the Virgin Mary. The Bible says that he came up was baptized, and his first sermon in Matthew chapter 4 was, a, was that you repent. That is so important, the first sermon. John the Baptist, his first sermon was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus' first sermon was repent. John the Baptist, his first sermon was repent. Peter's first sermon, after he had been filled with the Holy Spirit, was repent and be baptized, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came upon them mightily, powerfully. And one that had turned away from his master, betrayed and denied him, walked away from him. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. The power of God comes upon him. He begins to preach the word of God to the very people that had betrayed him. And he says to them that repent and be baptized. So if Jesus preached repentance, John the Baptist preached repentance, Peter preached repentance. Even the Apostle Paul, he preached repentance. That was all he did in Acts chapter 17. Repent. Somebody who had persecuted the very church. And now he's been converted into the faith. And he goes back and says, that, repent. Turn around. In the Old Testament, the prophets preached repentance. Ezekiel preached. Jeremiah preached. Repent. Repent. God's call to, to humanity is the call to repentance. It's repent and be reconciled with God. And it is important because the Bible says that without repentance, all men will perish. Without repentance, all men will perish. And the Lord is still calling on all of us to repent. And that is why it's important. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5. And again, remember, it's important to bring your Bible if you're using the app, it's okay. You can use the Bible app and then also make sure you refer to it and highlight it. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5 says that, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. God is still calling on us to repent. God is still calling on the church to rep repent. And that's why it's important for us to repent. I hope you have learned something. Repentance is important because Jesus preached it. It is important because the, uh, John the Baptist preached it. The Apostle Paul preached it. Peter preached it. The prophets preached it. It is stated all through the scriptures. Repent, repent, repent. And even now, he's calling on all of us to repent. So how do I repent how do I repent? How do I repent? Number one, you must have a godly grief 
for sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. Are you all there? Again, we are flipping through scriptures, so flip through with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. What does it say? Uh, it says that, um, verse, verse 10, For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. That is a godly grief for sin. So it starts with that godly grief. And number two, you must confess the known sins. John chapter 1 and, I beg your pardon, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. You must confess it. So you must not only have that godly grief, you must confess that known sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confessing the known sin is the beginning of your repentance. So you have that godly grief and now you confess your known sin. And then the third thing you believe, still in that scripture, it says that if you confess, but, uh, 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 but if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The third thing is that you must believe that once the sin is confessed, uh, um, you, you are forgiven. It is forgiven. When you confess it, he forgives you. He's faithful and just to forgive you. So you have that godly grief over sin. You confess that sin and believe that that sin is forgiven. And number four, you must forsake the sin now. Forsake it. Turn away from it. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Romans chapter 6 and the verse 1. Are you still with me? Are you learning? Are you learning? This is an important journey. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? In other words, if you have confessed it, then forsake it. Turn away from it. John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse 11. Let's go to John. Let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 11. Flip with me. Open with me. Open with me. Let's go. Let's go. John 8 and verse 11. It says that she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This was one that was being faced with, uh, 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 her, you know, her accusers had brought her to Jesus, accusing her. And when Jesus, you know, had asked her, where are your accusers? And the accusers were gone. And he says that, you know what? I don't condemn you. And uh, go now. Don't sin anymore. Go and forsake the sin. So you don't only have godly grief. You don't only confess your sins. You don't only believe, but you also forsake the sin. That is how you repent. And then the next thing you do is to resolve to bear fruit of repentance. If you have really repented, repented, then there must be a proof of your repentance. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8. If you have confessed it, give us the fruit of your, of your, of your repentance. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. Open with me. Let's all turn to it. Let's turn to it. Matthew chapter 3. And the verse 8. Are you there? It says this. Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Bear fruit. Therefore, bear fruit. You know, Jesus it says, And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath, of, of, of wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of of repentance. So if you are repented, then there must be fruit that must be born. And then you must, the next thing is that you must, you must make restitution where possible, where possible. Make restitution. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Are we learning together? Are we learning together? So you don't only have godly grief. You don't only confess your sins. You don't only believe in your heart. You don't only forsake. You must also resolve to bear fruit. 
and then make restitution where possible. Luke chapter 19, an interesting story in Luke chapter 19. I want to read the, the story to you, maybe the first 10 verses. The first 10 verses. Let's look at this. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he brought to see, he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be with a guest who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham, and for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Look at what got him uh, um, into this place. He made a confession. He says that, look, I give half of all my good to the poor, and I've take, if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. That is restitution. So repentance means that you must make the step to reconcile and to get things right. And then the next thing you do is to remember where you have fallen from, repent from that sin, and return to the Lord. And then the next thing you do is continually examine your ways to the Lord. Examine your ways continually. Don't stop there. Continually examine. Search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there is any wicked way in me. Every morning when you wake up. That is why we, we, when we come into prayer. You, you know, there is this, I'll teach about prayer. The first thing you do in prayer is adoration. We use the Acts principle. You adore the Lord. Number two, you confess your sins. And then number three, you go into thanksgiving. And number four, you have supplication. You confess and you ask him to search you, search his spotlight on you and help you live a life that you have believed in him to live a new life that is in Christ Jesus. That is what repentance is. Don't go back to it. Don't feel sorrow. Don't stay in the room. Cover yourself with pillows and cry only. You must take steps. Believe that he has forgiven you if you confessed. Now get yourself and resolve that I'm not going back to that sin and make restitution. Make an effort to press on and ask him for the grace. I don't know where you have fallen, the grace from which you've fallen, but rise again and know that he loves you. If you confess, he's faithful. He's just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Thank you for the time. This is episode number four. When we come back, we look at sanctification and what it means. I hope you're enjoying the journey. Make notes. I'll be back your way. I love you. See you soon.